I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lunenburg Snow Kingdom of the State. <laughs> so, I think officially five feet in ten days. Is that correct? Is it two feet this last storm? Yeah, it's yes. been, depending on what channel you listen to, but I've heard reports, it, there, it hovers around 23 to 24 inches, yeah. So I like it. <laughs> so I want to thank really all the people who, all the, all the people who do all our plowing, the DPW workers, all the contractors. I think they've done a really excellent job. I think people staying off the roads has done, they've done an excellent job listening so we could get the roads cleared because, you know, the, I was on the road yesterday uh, because I had to be, but I mean, the roads were kept well, but very low traffic. So thank you everyone for doing that. It is a serious thing. And you know, I just hope that uh, the pattern doesn't persist. I like, I, nobody likes snow more than I do, but it gets to be a point where <laughs> I'm shoveling it above my shoulder. It's, starting, it's going to start getting old fast. Uh, also, of course, another regional news. I just want to thank, uh, congratulate the New England Patriots, of course, for their fourth championship and a very, very exciting nail-biting game. Uh, probably in some places too nail-biting <laughs> for, <my, laughs> for my taste, but <laughs> at the end, they had more points, so that was the important thing. Any public announcements from or public comment from the board this evening? I guess I would just like to make one comment that if people are in a position or able to, it would be great to clear your storm drains. My husband and I spent an hour <laughs> finding and clearing the storm drains at the top of our fire road. And, you know, if it starts melting or we get rain, it would be terrible if all the storm drains are covered up. That, that area in our road turns into a pool, then turns into a stream. I mean, it's very dangerous. So and it turns if, into a sheet of ice yes. if it refreezes. Yeah, right. right, right. So if you're in a position to and can find them, it's really a good thing to do. I know the DPW must try to do it, but right. there's only so much they can do. Well, piggybacking on top of that, I guess I will reiterate a, a, a request from uh, public safety officials, both police and fire, that if, you know, there are obviously hydrants and the hydrants need to be shoveled out. They try to get all of them, but if you see one or know of one that is not... Obviously, it can be a life and death situation, so please you know, clear them out uh, for obvious reasons. Um, they, again, they try to go around and get them all, but some are overlooked or get replowed in after they're cleared. So, right. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, um, I'm, gonna, um, I'm proposing um, an article for town meeting um, back when I worked at what was then the Executive Office of Communities and Development and uh, when Title V changed uh, to require uh, major upgrades for a lot of people, um, the then state agency created a grant program to cities and towns that could lend money to citizens that met certain income requirements. Um, that was successfully done in Lunenburg. It was administered by the Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. Uh, I believe all the people that the loans were given to have been paid back with interest. Um, there's approximately $100,000 in that account at the moment. Um, a few years ago, we investigated what could be done with that. We contacted what is now Department of Housing and Community Development, and they said that that was not something they wanted back, that the, the, the town got it back and, as considered program income. But they recommended doing it in similar um, purposes. Since that time, we have, um, we're in the process, uh, the sewer commission is in the process of extending sewer lines uh, and, um, on Pratt and um, Lakeview areas of town. And at that point, there was some discussion from some of the citizens who met what would be considered the typical income guidelines of whether there was any assistance, and there wasn't anything at that time. I'm proposing that the town... Um, take that money, put it under the, the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen. I did contact the uh, Regional Planning Agency, who I have known um, the people who administered before. They said they'd be willing to administer it again because that's not something I would see that our, our staff should be doing that, and they administer it for other towns for revolving fund purposes, and that we would expand the purpose for both uh, septic system replacement and connection to the sewer line. Um, 
I, certainly not asking for a discussion tonight, but I was just wanting to bring that up and uh, go forward from that for the future. Okay. Mr. Chairman, just one comment. I, I think this is a great idea. I know the prior um, program was administered by the Board of Health, actually, um, through the MRPC. And the only question that I would have is I know in selecting applicants, although MRPC administered it, there was a lot of discussion amongst the board as to the criteria under which um, you know septic systems would be improved what the you know whether they were uh, their proximity to environmentally sensitive areas for example whether or not they were discharging to the surface of the ground so I think you know certainly putting the article on but I think we're going to need to work with the Board of Health to identify the most critically environmentally as well as income eligible and MRPC did the income component but the, the classification and the point system of what systems were the, in the most dire need was the criteria established by the Board of Health. That'd be great. I'll um, contact them. Um, their meeting was canceled last night due to the storm. So. <clears throat> Any other public comment from the board? Uh, just two announcements. Uh, first, because of the storm, whether the uh, open house about the pipeline that was to be held uh, last week has been rescheduled for Fitchburg for February 26th. There are other dates in here that may have been changed too. We have, have we posted all the dates? Yes. Uh, all the, all the dates, so I don't know which ones have changed. I know that particular one, because that was the one I was going to be going to, uh, about the pipeline have changed. But they're all on the website. But the one that's closest to us, two that are closest to us, February 25th in Berlin, Mass., at the Berlin Memorial Elementary School Gymnasium on 34 South Street in Berlin. And then the next night, February 26th, at, in Fitchburg, at the Fitchburg Memorial Middle School Gymnasium, on 615 Rollstone Street. So again, very important pipeline. Pipeline's obviously been uh, very much in the news lately, especially if you live in North Dakota. Uh, none of them good news, by the way, as they never are. Um, so hope people can attend. The second announcement is just a reminder again from the Boys and Girls Club of Lunenburg to save the date for the third annual Are You Smarter Than Our Sixth Graders Game Show fundraiser, which will be held Friday, February 27th, in the Lunenburg High School Auditorium. Watch as teams of adults compete against each other with help from our sixth graders in traditional academic trivia. Will the Red Hats come to defend their title? Will the library team return to declare victory? And will the class of 95 still be looking, will st still be the best looking team? <laughs> Which team will be crowned champion? More importantly, do you want to play? If you'd like to be a sponsor, there are several opportunities, all the way from corporate sponsorships of sponsoring the event and a team, all the way down to sponsoring a round or sponsoring sixth graders or sponsoring questions. They're all different donation amounts. You can visit the website at bgclubofluneburg.org uh, to see more about the project. We do hope people can uh, participate as a team. Again, I will reiterate that we, they requested a, a, a board of selectmen team. They requested maybe a town team, somebody, uh, police or fire, any department. Uh, but it's open to anybody, teams of three or four. And of course, we need a really enthusiastic audience. Last two years, you know, for two years ago, it was the first year it was done. You know, it was very successful, but very new, so it wasn't a lot of uh, air time about it. Last year, we had a great crowd, so we really want to try to fill the auditorium, and it's for a great cause anyway, so. <clears throat> okay, item number one. Oh, any public comment from the public? Okay, at 7 p.m., we have Tom Bertram of the Lunenburg Snow Riders about an RTP grant. Yes, and so I am Tom Bertram, most, most of you know me. Um, I'm here tonight to, to talk about the RTP grant, but I'd like to, to give you a little history on what's been going on. We've been very active, the club's been very active in the last five years. So I want to give you a little bit of history, and then we'll talk about um, the RTP grant we applied for for the Lane property. So first about, you know, who are we? The Lunenburg Snow Riders. We're a family-oriented organization dedicated to fostering the sport of snowmobile snowmobiling and outdoor winter activities in a safe and responsible manner. 
We have approximately 60 or 80 family memberships, and we're a member of the Snowmobile Association of Massachusetts. So that's the larger club. There are there are uh, there are um, our legislative uh, representation at the state house, and they also provide us insurance. So we do have insurance. Any of the property that we cross, whether it be private property or public property, it is covered under our insurance umbrella. So that's good for people to know. A little little uh, history about the Snowmobile Club. It was ori originally established back around 1969 when some of our members included uh, Fred, Fred Sozik, Gordon Kimball from uh, the Apple Orchard, Russ Harvey, who uh, you know most of you guys know Russ, and of course Paul Anderson uh, down in Hickory Hills. In the mid-1990s, uh, we sought official permission from the Conservation Commission to use uh, the Cowdery lot. Um, and we actually took out one of the original handbooks from the 19, early 1970s that actually talked about snowmobiling in the Cowdery lot going back that far. We rejuvenated the club back around 2001, 2002 into what is today's organization. And in 2011, after the ATV law passed, uh, we actually um, have a, a formal process of requesting permission to use designated trails in Lunenburg that are under the town or the conservation's control. So, so what do we do, right? We are an organization, we believe in giving back to the communities that partner with us on trail access. We provide countless hours of trail maintenance, erosion control, and bridge building. We regularly donate uh, safety equipment and enhancements for local communities. Uh, Lunenburg, Ashby, and Townsend in particular, we've donated dry rescue flotation suits uh, and portable metapacks. We donate to the Lions Club for food bank. We, drive, we do food uh, drives all the time. And we work with the Toys for Tots and the Salvation Army for donation when it comes to Christmas time. Some of the milestones that we've done, <clears throat> we created uh, a, the bypass trail around the Oliva property. We know, you know, those of you guys who have been around for a while know that that, uh, that, that main access road. Uh, we work closely with Hickory Hills uh, to, you know, to donate that property. We actually put that bypass trail in to go around the Oliva property. Uh, we built a 120-foot bridge through um, a, a, a wet area in the Cowdery lot that accessed a piece of property on Malpas Road that was directly abutting but previously was inaccessible. Uh, so that, that basically made that piece of property contiguous. We did a major uh, repair on erosion issues up on Robb's Hill that was caused by illegal ATV use a few years back. Uh, we've built, repaired, replaced the bridge over the Malpas multiple times. Um, we, we're planning in, uh, to put a, a connect, connect a trail between the small town forest and the, um, the Cowdery lot so we can connect those two pieces of property without using Melpus Road. We've got a very large project going on at the Harold Harvey site that includes a handicap ac accessible nature viewing area. And this included road improvements, a deck, uh, and beaver deceivers. So this is a, a very large project that I'll talk about and show you here in some detail. And of course, the lane property, we were uh, helpful in the acquisition, you know, assistance. We drove attendance to that, and we've committed manpower and equipment for a parking area. Okay? So, some of the things we've done is we've applied for and received multiple grants through what is the RTP program, the Recreational Trails Grant Program. So, this, this is actually um, or, um, delivered through the DCR, through the state, but it's funded through the federal gas tax. All right. So in 2011, we received a $35,000 grant from which um, the award, the total grant amount was $35,000. Um, the award to the, to the club was $27,000 and our match was $8,000. The vast majority of that money went towards um, our, our multi-season recreational trail maintenance vehicle, otherwise known as a Kubota. <laughs> In 2013, we again put another grant, and this one was for $35,000, of which we were awarded $24,000 to the club. $11,000 was our match. The vast majority of this money went directly into uh, conservation land. And I want to say all but um, I want about $6,000 went directly into building a road, putting in culverts, putting in beaver deceivers, and building a deck um, as a give back to the town. So the grant total, you know, in the past, you know, three, four, five years here has been $71,000, of which $51,000 came from the, the, uh, the RTP, and our match was $19,000. So that $19,000, nearly $20,000, is in-kind donation. The vast majority of that is sheer labor. So just to put a perspective on what we're doing.
okay? So in the, in the, here on the right, this is our multi-season recreational trail maintenance vehicle. It is a wheeled vehicle, but it has tracks uh, and a plow. Uh, and this is actually the bridge, the decking material and the culverts. Uh, the decking material was purchased from the grant and the culverts were in kind donated uh, from the town, from Jack Rodekins, um, uh, uh, and, and to, help our, to help offset, right? So it's a, it's a pretty good partnership we have going here. Some of the other value that we do um, year to date, and this was actually a month old, over 200 hours of, of, of uh, manpower donated just to work on the trails, another almost $5,000. One of our members um, donated over $6,000 in road material. In 2012, we had 325 hours. 2012, we donated the, uh, the, the Ashby dry suit. In 2011, we donated the, the Medipacks to Townsend. In 2010, again, approximately $500 of, of uh, material was donated in, in to repair the, the, um, the damage done by ATVs. In 2008 was when we donated the, um, the dry suit to Lunenburg, and uh, we do an annual, annual ju uh, juvenile diabetes sponsorship. So this doesn't include any of, the, any of our own money that we use, we collect from the club for, for maintenance and grooming. So here's some pictures, and um, I want to, you know, I, I can't give credit to everyone. I wish I could. Um, uh, Steve Powell and his crew have been fantastic. Eric Montano is always there, Jack Rabbit. Um, and this is of us working and repairing that trail up on Robs Hill. Um, I should also mention Lakeview Landscaping. Um, so the bridge donations in, of itself, now this is club money here, is another $5,000. Okay, this is just building bridges and working on the trail. So this is over since 2010. So we put the first beaver receivers in Lunenburg. Well, I shouldn't say the first ones because other people have done it. But we did the first ones down in the Cowdery lot. Um, and the first ones, we built these in the garage. And they were, they were pretty successful. We, it was a learning process. But if you ever walked down the Cowdery lot, the whole trail had been completely flooded out. And so we're trying to maintain the water level there. The thing about beavers is you have to learn to live with them. Um, or eradicate them, right? And eradicating them is very difficult, very expensive. So you can't just knock the dam out, they'll rebuild it. You need to lower the water level down to a level that they find acceptable and you find acceptable. So it's kind of a coexistence that works the best. Uh, just some, some trail work pictures. We put signage up uh, everywhere. You know, this is a, in a neighborhood, so that sign says, quiet, please. Um, you know, we, we have signs up that says, you know, respect trail, uh, Trail, uh, respect landowners, um, you know, otherwise the trails will be, will be taken away. So let me talk a little bit about the Harold Harvey site. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with this, but down off of Townsend Harbor Road, nearly just, if you're heading down Townsend Harbor Road, the dam would be on your left. Just before the dam, there's a right hand, there's a dirt road there on the right hand side. It used to be uh, Art Dyer's um, gravel pit. And after you excavated all the gravel out, he donated it to the town. And it basically sat idle until somewhere around the mid 70s when um, Harold Harvey and uh, one of the science teachers in, in the high school, I don't remember if you remember Bob, um, did the green thumb. Uh, Doug Fleming? Yes, yeah. yeah. They, they put a canoe portage in down there and they, they, they built that site up and to make it an area that you could, you know, you could put a canoe in and canoe down the Malpas. And after that, it just kind of went, went, went fallow. Nothing happened to it. And so we as a club said, you know, we'd like to do something to give back to the town, right? And we thought this would be a great area to do. And so what we did down there is we, um, well, this is from the grant itself. So um, the Lunenburg's Narez plan on improving the existing road by adding hard pack, installing drainage, and construction of new informational kiosk um, and a, a, a gate. And then we're going to put a couple culverts in, but basically we're building the road up and putting beaver deceivers in. And then we planned on putting a 10 by 60 deck in, um, making it handicap accessible. Now, the site didn't actually allow for a 10 by 60. I think it ended up being like 12 by 24, but it's, it's still a significant deck down there. And I don't, I don't want to come out and say who donated all this road material. Um, I'll let you read between the lines because I've talked to this person and he won't come out and say whether he wants his name out there. So I'm not going to say, um, but a lot of the material always donated. A lot of material and a lot of equipment. And we thank this person a whole lot. 
Um, we also, I want to thank Brett Ramsden. Every time we do any work, Brett is there. Now, what you see in this picture might appear to be Brett getting ready to destroy a house, <laughs> which I'm sure Brett would do if you asked him to, but that is not the case. This is the entry into this uh, Harold Harvey site, and the, uh, the landowner here, we went and talked to him, and we said, um, you know, we're going to be coming through here, we're going to improve this area, and it was a nice old couple, and uh, he said... Uh, he said, and there was a, a tree down and a stump down in this lawn. And he's like, is, is there any way when you're down in the saw you can, you can cut up this tree? And I said, yeah, we can do that. We can cut up that tree. I said, would you like the stump removed, you know? He says, I'd love that. And so I cut up the tree and I said to Brett, I said, would you mind, you know, picking up that stump? And Brett just loves to use his little machine. He just you know, rips the stump up. And so, you know, that is a picture of Brett um, removing that stump. Which, by the way, he then had this stump that he used, proceeded to use to clear the trail, like <laughs> a, an anvil. Um, so, uh, Brett and, uh, and, and, and crew have always been really good to us. So, this is a, a beaver deceiver um, that was very successful. Later on in the presentation, you'll see one that was not so successful. Uh, but you can see a beaver deceiver basically is just a, a, a fence around a pipe in the simplest format so that they can't block that pipe up, right? Um, and this is a culvert going across that area. These are the actual beaver deceivers that we put in the large dam on the Mulpus. So this, this, is, um, this is the site down uh, off of uh, Townsend Harbor Road. Looking here, in this picture on the right, I don't know if you can see the mouse, that is standing in, and you're basically looking at the dam from the Mulpus, okay? Um, and, and this is a, a, big, a big dam here um, that they've had for years and years and years. And so we just want to drop the water about four, four to six inches. And so we put these two pipes in. Again, these two pipes were donated by, by the town, by Jack Rodequins as in kind, uh, so that we can, we can just bring that water down a little bit. And then in the background here, this is where the deck is. This is where the handicapped viewing station is. Okay. It is beautiful. While we're down there, the beavers are spinning around, and, and every time we walk down there, we see deer down there. I'm telling you, if you've never been down there, you, you know you really should. And you know, when we're done, you're going to be able to uh, to get down there in, in, a, in a wheelchair. <coughs> um, our work sessions. We do a lot of work sessions, but I'm here to tell you, we have fun. Okay, so in our case here, we brought some pizza out in the Kubota. I also want to rec you know recognize these people um, are from Ashby. So they have come down to help us put this deck up because, you know, we go into, into Ashby and we do snowmobiling and trail work and they come down here and help us as well. So we have town residents and non-town residents all working together. I also want to tell you that this right here, you really can't see it, but this gentleman is operating a chainsaw. And he works for um, post, one of the Post and Beam barn companies, and he uses that chainsaw with more accuracy than I can use a skill saw. <laughs> and, well, that's not saying a lot because I'm not real good with a skill saw, but <laughs> somebody who's good with a skill he, um, But anyway, yeah, Justin did a great job there. So um, this is the deck, um, nearly completed. And uh, this is the state it sits in now. We, we, we ran out of time in the fall. And you can see the beaver deceiver in the background going through the dam. Um, so this is an example of a beaver deceiver that did not work as well as the others, right? So what has happened here is, is that the water wasn't as deep, and they were able to dam this up. This, this was overnight. Okay, this went in on whatever day it was, Saturday, Sunday. The next day, they had this completely blocked up. So we were out there. We have like four or six hours on a weekend to donate, you know, it, as volunteers. They have 7 by 24 to do nothing better than <laughs> build a dam. So if you ever want to um, drive yourself crazy, just try to fight with a beaver. <coughs> Okay, so as part of this grant, this is the same grant now. This is the 2013 grant that was awarded. We have to complete the word by, work by June of 2015. We also are planning on doing some improvements to the trails in the Cowdery lot and the town, the, uh, town forest. And basically, we're going to be adding some graded base. You can, it's tough to see here, but all these roots are exposed, and so we want to cover that up, right? And then, like, the same thing here. Um, this is um, this is out in the town forest, very similar thing. So we have material in there to do that. So that's kind of where we are on the grants that we've been awarded. The 2011 bought us the machine. The 2013 we did a bunch of improvements to trails and we that deck really are the big things. And in the club, we also bought the club a drag, um, but the majority of it was that. Now. 
The land property is what we're here to talk about. So we did work with the Open Space Committee on, um, on the acquiring the purchase and defining the scope, right? We helped drive attendance to that meeting and, and get people out there to vote for that. And we committed um, to provide equipment and manpower to constructing a parking lot. Um, and there are, we have trails on the property today. This is, you know, um, from Holman Street to the large town forest. In some parts of what we call the town forest trail, we have now learned actually just run inside the, the, the lane property bounds. All right, and I'll show you that in a map here in a minute. So uh, this is the targeted mailing we sent out and, you know, to try to drive attendance. <coughs> This is what we're asking for in the 2015 grant. So this grant just went in on February 2nd, um, so last week. Construction of the main parking lot, construction of the handicapped access parking lot, um, handicapped tra trail improvements, basically more graded base, a five, foot, uh, five foot bridges over the Malpas, these are pedestrian only bridges, uh, culvert replacement and additions, trail marking and improvements, Construction of a meaningful access bridge across the Malpas, uh, a trailhead kiosk, and a, an acquisition of a, of a power unit for the club. It's so basically a, util a new utility snowmobile for the club to help maintain the rest of the trails. Interestingly enough about the RTP grants, there's three buckets of money. There is non-motorized use, there is motorized use, and then there's mixed use. And what we have learned through our um, through our experiences is that the non-motorized runs out really quick, the motorized runs out really quick, but the mixed use is kind of the last bucket to go. And they are actually, in some years, they actually have difficulty fulfilling all the, the, the expenditures. They can't spend all the money, wow. okay? But the other two buckets run out. And so this is helpful not only for the town, but for the club, is we're asking for a snowmobile as well. Okay? And it's perfectly in line with what the grant process is for. So the grant that we asked for, the total value, project value, is $49,524.89. Of which the amount we're requesting um, from the RTP is $34,799.02. The match being $14,725.87. How does that break down? This is the parking lot proposal. Okay, I don't know. Can, I don't know. Can you see that? It's very difficult to see. Uh, basically, it's, it the overall length is 120 feet. Okay, on this side here, there's two spots for trailers. The idea being, you know, two equestrian trailers or two snowmobile trailers, and then there's something like um, eight or ten parking spots up here. Uh, and this is, again, from our, um, our, our anonymous donor um, up here who has um, offered, again, to donate all the equipment uh, for the construction of this parking lot. So, you know, the, the excavator, um, the compactor, um, and, and, you know, we'll have the, our, our deal is the club members do the operation, um, but, but the pals are, are donating the equipment and, and, and Ramsden as well, you know. Um, so this is the parking lot, and if you're wondering, this is where it is, is if you go down Holman Street to the dead end not from uh, Northfield Roadside, right where the existing, right where the, the bridge is, just before that is where the, the trail is. That's where the handicapped parking lot will be. That'll just be for like two spots, uh, no parallel parking. This will be just before that. There's a big mound of dirt just before that, and we're going to go in there and put this parking lot in. All right, so this is, this is a picture of, the, of uh, the lane property, okay, and the existing trails that are on it. So this, this map was produced by, by Brandon Kibbe and the, and the Land Acquisition Advisory Committee. Did I get that right? So this map was created by, by that group. <clears throat> and you can see here that um, there, it, it's specked out with the different colors. So this is the, the access trail. Um, and then the yellow here is a multi-use multi trail. So what happens is the existing trail um, goes here and down, and it actually crosses two pieces of private property. Okay, This is actually you know, uh, private property here. 
So what we're proposing is to make a bypass trail around here over this over the over the Malpas and connect to the other multi-use trail so that we can get, have real meaningful access from Holman Street all the way to the large town forest over here. All right, so that's kind of the big picture what's going on. These are the locations. These are where the footbridges are going. And this is, it was an approximation of where that bridge, this, this purple line, by the way, is an approximation. We haven't, we haven't gone out there and found the best route. It's just, you know, give you an idea of what we're doing. So we've come, the parking lot will go here. This is the main trail. This is the water line, by the way, right? This is the main water line that, that we all know and love. Um, and then it turns and it goes back down and then it cuts under the, the, under Jane Oliva's driveway, right? We have access there. So we're trying to bypass all of that and keep it all on town property. So that's, that's the big picture. Um, just some more details is topo map and the GPS locations. So I don't know how long I took, but I hope it was within my allotted time. <laughs> Are there any questions, concerns, comments? Yeah. I think it's great. I like the presentation, so thank you for that. And uh, of course, I fully support it. I, I wish there was more use of town conservation land for recreational purposes. I think that certainly fills that. And I applaud your group and all the work that you've done already. So I would be supportive of this, sure. Yeah, thank you for all the work you've done. It's, it's fabulous. You're welcome. Is there anything, Tom, that you're looking for us tonight, for, from us tonight? I don't think so. Just, you know, your moral support and, you know, I, as one thing that we're running into is we're exhausting our volunteers. So as we get into the work part of the lane property and building these five bridges and putting the culverts in, you know, I mentioned this, this same very, very similar uh, presentation I did to the Conservation Commission. And so I'm going to put a call out for help for volunteers. Um, and so when that comes, you know, if we can rally the troops, Jamie, I know that you're part of, you know, Hickory Hills and we have a great volunteer base. This property abuts that, so I'm sure we'll get, you know, people there. But that would be, you know, my request is as we move forward, you know, having more volunteers. Because if everybody comes out and gives an hour or two, it makes a huge difference, you know. That's, mm -hmm. so, but thanks. So what kind of help do you need? Just Every kind of help, you know, it's moral, moral support. Who, Kathy Beal, when we, when we worked on Hickory Hills, Kathy Beal comes out with hot soup and food, you know, <laughs> and so that type of thing is, is as appreciated as, as the guy with the excavator, right? Mm -hmm. There's always something for somebody to do. It does, it's not all about sheer um, strength, so. Right. One of the things the Conservation Commission has talked about doing is trying to put together a volunteer base, whether it be brush clearing on trails, whether it be helping to build bridges, whether it be um, uh, dealing with signage or, or addressing vandalism. There's a number of things on numerous Conservation Commission properties that there's a lot of work out there that can be done. Yeah, we, we're building a kiosk, right? So I got a guy who can swing a hammer and build a kiosk. I got a guy who can build this, put the cement in. Uh, we, if someone could do the research on what is the habitat in that property and build flyers, right? That type of thing would be great, you know, and, and mark the trails, make a map. So it's not all about, you know, sheer, uh, you know, strength. It's we, we use whatever we can get. So any talent, it's like, it's like the town. Any talent <laughs> you have, we will exploit. <laughs> and thank you. Um, one, one of the things that's good about uh, Lunenburg's conservation is that the, the, all the land that they try to make it publicly accessible and that I've gone in several of the tours and I think this is great what you're doing including making it handicapped accessible yeah. so I think it's great you could just change exploit to <laughs> take the opportunity to use <laughs> sometimes wordier is better otherwise well, we're we understand we're talking about the pipeline then yeah exactly yeah. exactly all right well thank, thank you. you and good luck with the grant when will you know? Um, Nine months. Nine months. Wow. Well, good luck. Yes. We've, we're two for two right now. We have a very, very talented grant writer. Uh -huh. oh. <laughs> have you asked for letters of support from our 
state delegation i'm assuming you have i have i did not this one we we really did it in, in a compressed timeline we have in the past oh, it's been submitted already it's been oh, submitted okay, gotcha. okay but we know. have in the past and we we, we have received that um that support both times we asked Good. yes but we did have letters of support from the conservation commission. yeah conservation commission and and the uh the construction companies that are providing everything so excellent well, I mean, the work that you've done must really help your cause in going for the next grant. Yeah. They yeah, know you and, really use it. Yeah, and I, th we, I think the last, um, so these are in-kind donation grants, which um, are reimbursement grants, I mean, which means we have to come up with the money up front and then do the work, prove we did the work, pro show them the canceled check on the equipment, and then we get reimbursed at some state oh. timeline later. So it's it's quite a process. But the last reimbursement we put in, the, uh, the Harold Harvey site, I think it was at 85%. Uh, completion so we're making good progress excellent keep up the good work thank you again thank you okay update and status of goals of board of selectmen so due to <laughs> three jobs my regular job and then shoveling is now my other <laughs> yeah, full part-time right. job i did not get to this so i will try to get to this uh, the most important one of these is I really want to get, and if we can start organizing the meeting with the planning board, because I think uh, there's two meetings that are very important. The meeting with the planning board, the building reuse committee, and the school committee, and the school building committee to talk about the T.C. Passios building and property lines, and then the economic development, well, then one with just us and the planning board, talk about economic development and the earth removal you know, when I when I was at the um, school committee meeting last, they were talking about you know the thought of using the primary school for town offices and including the the um, the, the executive offices for the superintendent, and then maybe even their achieve program. Or, um, and I was thinking, geez, they haven't even heard of that yet. You know, it feels like we need to figure out a way to keep everybody in the loop more um when i was at the um massachusetts Muni municipal association meeting they talked about in concord they have a chair's breakfast every month and so that the chairs of every committee get together and it's just coffee and donuts it's not ham and eggs but that it's the most important meeting for most people all month i think it avoids a lot of that this stuff because they're all of the chairs or in communication regularly, and I was hoping we could do something like that, some way to get more regular communication. You know, I, I know when Toby, Toby, um, when I back when I was the chair, Toby Bacaza had asked to do a chairs meeting. We didn't have many of them; we probably had three or four, but I found them to be very useful. Um, problem is coordinating everybody's schedule, but I think it does make sense. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's crazy but like one saturday a month or something at 10 o'clock you know S well, some time that everybody hmm. can make we've tried to do them in the past and and i i guess there was a time and i'm looking i'm going back a few years when when really there was not a large amount of communication the, the website wasn't up people didn't we didn't have liaisons and stuff like that um that i think it was really important back then i'm not saying it wouldn't be important now but i don't know of many times i mean i'm sure it happens occasionally that another board is doing something that we're not aware of or vice versa that is of vital importance and we shouldn't have gotten involved in but i don't know that it happens all that much i i'm not that's not that's not, I'm not meant to be rose-colored glasses i think that's i think i'm being objective and honest that i don't know that it comes up very often i'm not saying it never comes up but um I mean, I'm not against having them, but like like Ms. Bert Mrs. Bertram said, that it's it is tough to logistically get people together. And then there's always the chance if you have a chairs meeting, you know, how many people do you have? How many, you know, where where's the cutoff, and what group doesn't get their chair to be there? You know, so uh, you know, I I just think. It to me, it was helpful because hearing what issues the Board of Health was facing or what issues conservation was facing, this was more of a land use chairs is the way the way we did it. Um, and, and, you know, we flushed out a whole new process for building permits, for example, um, you know, for checklists and, and adding different things to the to the already the process that was already in place, but I improving that. And I think that came about through those meetings. 
So I, I do think that understanding what every other department is dealing with, and I, I know I get a lot from our updates from from every from mm -hmm. all of the liaisons. The other departments and boards don't have those liaisons. Right. So I think you know that is the opportunity for them to liaison with each other. Mm -hmm. um, talking about meetings, one of the things I know I agree with all the things that you pointed out, Tom. But one thing I would like to talk about sometime in the near future is the stormwater management, yep. because there's, that's a potential budget issue. And I know there's money in the budget for stormwater. I'm just not sure exactly what for. And I think there are costs coming down up, you know, in the near future. Um, certainly within the next two fiscal years. Um, and understanding what we can put in place and, and what finances we're going to need to come up with, I think, is really important to, to discuss. Well, you know, dealing with stormwater is another thing that really it encompasses the work of Multitudes many boards. Of many boards. Conservation and Commission, Planning Board, Board of Selectmen, DPW. Even the Sewer Commission. The Sewer yeah. Commission. You know, there's just, there's a lot of overlap. Okay, so we will try to get those put together uh, minutes I don't have minutes uh, so without what is our plan with minutes because I know that well further on your agenda I'm hoping you're going <laughs> to ratify the appointment of the executive assistant okay. and one of her tasks is so going I'll, to I'll, be minutes all right <laughs> I, I will not steal your thunder so warrants this is uh, payroll, $640,620.40. Accounts, a deduction, uh, payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $264,670.52. And accounts payable in the amount of $285,069.50. And three cents. Action file issues. I'm not sure whether this comes under committee reports or now. I wanted to sort of recap the MART um, BOS workshop that we had and see where we are. So I don't know where. Uh, you can do it now, sure. Okay. I mean. um, as a result of the workshop we had on January 20th at 6 p.m., the uh, it's my understanding that the BOS has informed MART that Lunenburg wants to increase MART transportation in Lunenburg to include town center, improve access to commuter rail, especially early and late for commuters, remain within that MBTA assessment of $37,243 for fiscal 15. That's my understanding of what we wanted to do. And, you know, maybe we can use the senior center van for some of it, maybe not. Um, the MART reps informed us that they can work with us to tailor route specifics, that the service could begin as early as March if we were ready, and it can be changed with a 30-day notice. That MART wants to work with one BOS member to avoid confusion. And, you know, I'm happy to remain in that role as a MART rep, but if the board wishes to designate another person, you know, that's... That's fine with me. Um, they can't get out that easy, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, Before you go further with that, <laughs> <laughs> they um, suggested utilizing the Council on Aging driver because at forty dollars an hour, it's a little bit cheaper where we could. Um, that they can provide service that falls within our cost requirement, and they're assuming that. 20% fair revenue will be factored into the cost estimate. They suggest that we advertise the improved access to encourage ridership, maybe work with Walmart, CVS, you know, people that would, you know, businesses that would benefit from that. 
um, and other businesses positively affected by these improvements. That's kind of what I think is a recap of what happened. I think you are right. Okay. The, the only thing I would add, um, it wasn't just to the center of town. It was, oh, right. was also was to also serve Whalem. Right. right. So that, that that connection was, it, it was a, a joint effort and that we would be able to get two for one. Right, right. Because we're already going to Whalem and Walmart, but I was the, adding the center and making it one loop. Right. And then and we weren't really hung up on which commuter rail we got to as long as we got to one. I don't think they're going from Whalem to Walmart now, though. I think they're, they're, oh, going, that, yeah, they, that's they're right. going from they're going to Whalem via Summer Street. They're going down Summer Street. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that they're going right. from Whalem to they Walmart. Don't, yeah, right. right. They don't There's go no bus route on Route 13 right, right now. Right. Right. So this is an expansion of service. I, I think that's exactly the recap, and I know that they had indicated they were going to get us work with, they wanted to work with one person to come up with the specific times and the specific routes. Mm -hmm. And I think you've been working with them, doing a fantastic job. And oh, if thanks. you're willing to continue, I think that So then great. I'll just try to set up a time with them and just try to come up with something that makes sense. And I, where they assume, you know, 20% fair revenue, I'm thinking that we should try to underspend that, uh, that 37 by it, at least the 20% because we don't know if we'll have much revenue or not. So I would rather underspend than overspend, right. potentially. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, and, uh, you know, and I'll let um, Carrie know what we come up with, and then we'll talk. Great. Excellent. Hi. Committee reports. Board of Health. Snowed out. <laughs> I have a funny <laughs> feeling about these. <laughs> Building Reuse Committee. Uh, no report. Capital Planning. Uh, Capital Planning Committee uh, did present to the uh, Finance Committee on the 22nd of January. Um, I believe it was well received. Uh, there were a couple of questions put out in terms of uh, a longer term 10 year focus in the future and, and the uh, use of financing as part of that, uh, part of capital planning uh, philosophy. And the committee is awaiting any further input from the town manager of FINCA. Yeah, I thought that meeting w went really well. And I liked the idea of planning out. I mean, you, you kind of, you know, Terry even mentioned going 15 or 20 years. I mean, you kind of know how, many, how often you want to replace a police car and how often, and, and, you know, like in, in your own home, you kind of plan things out. I would think that a long, the longer, you know, it's not going to be accurate you know but you know you know these things are coming up and the more you can plug them in i would think the better that would be for planning purposes i know specifically for vehicles that's one of the things with our goals is the vehicle rotation right um, plan right and you i would think a 20-year horizon would be very doable <laughs> i mean all those big ticket items they must have to last 15 years right you'd hope I also thought that it was a good beginning discussion about borrowing versus cash mm -hmm. as relates to the finance policies that we, we um, approved as well, um, and then how that interacts with the um, pavement management program. And the, the good thing about borrowing is that the next year you have to pay the debt, so it gets built in, so you don't put off that vehicle one more year and one more year, one more year, and 10 years down the line, you've not done it. The bad thing is that you've factored in a dollar amount and you've got interest. So it, it's a balancing effort. You're also paying with future dollars that are usually worth less than the current dollars. And I think that that discussion started <clears throat> with a very vigorous uh, discussion with the Capital Planning and the Finance Committee. It always comes but, back to <clears throat> moderation, doesn't it? You don't, you don't do too much of anything. But, but I think one of the things that's important to recognize is that the the financial policies didn't come to play to control financing. The financing kind of grew out of the financial policies. It was right. uh, the policies were put in place as as reasonable fiscal constraints and and appropriate relative to our bond rating, et cetera. And then the capital planning group began to kind of say, "Hey, maybe we should be looking at those policies and utilizing them." Uh, to make more planful decisions in terms of capital spending. Well, I did, certainly planning is important and how far you want to go out 10 or 15 years. I, I think anything beyond 15 years 
if if you get to the point where you can admittedly say, well, we know it's not going to be accurate, then I would argue that you shouldn't be doing it. I mean, that's it's really not a, worth that much. But 10 years, certainly, you could do. And in a way, I think there, even though it's never been on paper, I think we all know, or, or many people have been here a long time, and that's that's something we have to stop. We have to stop the idea that, well, if you've been here a long time, you know what the, 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 the ramping up is. You really want somebody to be able to step in and read the policies, and so within one year of being on any of the boards, they know what's, you know, mm -hmm. what, the, what the plan is. So I'm, I'm for that. As far as the borrowing versus, you know, just paying it out of, directly out of the budget, of course, that's been a long-standing item that shifted, you know, back before I started, they were like, nobody was borrowing. And then, you know, the problem is that it eventually catches up to you. If you take money out of your hand, you can't do some of the things that you need to do, even if the capital equipment has a useful life of 20 years, you, as, as Mr. Ebersol said, you wind up not buying it, and then you're just hurting yourself because you're working with kind of a, 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 almost a crippled department or a piece of equipment that's not reliable, and you wind up paying for it in the long term anyway. So I, I think I think everything, seeing the numbers of what the difference would be and what we can do, I think is important. I think that was a good step uh, in promoting that conversation. FinCom, I'm guessing that's the same. Yeah, with the with the exception that the next meeting on the 12th is the town manager's uh, budget, uh, 2016 budget pre presentation. Oh, next, no, okay, that's, that's oh, we should on, say that. On the, on the 12th, yes. Next uh, Thursday. Thursday. Right. Not, right. Oh, two and Thursdays. it's televised, right? Two, yes. Okay. Uh, actually, actually, just to that point, uh, all of the finance committee meetings through the budget process are televised. Will they be weekly? after february 12th yes so um okay. town managers relative to the snow yeah right <laughs> so the the, the budget plan to be weekly right so the budget meeting is the 12th and then every week thereafter there's right other groups correct okay. and they're all televised mm -hmm. library board of trustees uh library board of trustees um came before the finance committee and uh made a reserve fund request uh dealing with the um majorly increased uh, utility costs um, the finance committee as uh, the town manager and noted is that normally does not make a transfer this early in the year um, libraries constrained with um, staffing costs and costs that they have to have for in order to meet the state requirements but they were given assurances that that it, they would not be spending their their funds without enough money there and that they would revisit it but it was just important for them to get it on the agenda um, they're continuing to work with the green um, committee uh, as far as the exterior lights for the um, uh, for energy saving and they're uh, doing a lot of work on the interior lights both for energy savings but also to make sure that the lights meet what they need for operations thank you MPO. No meeting, and the February meeting is canceled, uh, so our next meeting will be the second week of March. Okay. Planning board, Snow they were canceled. Yeah. PAC was canceled. <laughs> school committee. Oh, the school committee met on uh, January 21, so that, that happened. It was announced that the MSBA has sent a $5 million installment for the middle high school project. Um, Mike Mackin pointed out that there are lots of local contractors on site, so some of this money is staying local. The dedication of the Buddy Bench, donated in memory of Bob Meek Levesque, was postponed due to inclement weather <laughs> and will be rescheduled. The superintendent reminded all that the FY16 budget is now on the website and is scheduled to be presented to FinCom, I believe, on March 5th. The superintendent expressed appreciation on behalf of students, faculty, and staff for putting forth the budget recommended by principals and department leaders. The increase with all the positions added is 9% over fiscal year 15. The school committee voted to raise the rate paid to substitute school nurses from $120 to $130 a day. It seems that the rate for this service is going up in the area and they're having trouble finding substitute nurses and they're not comfortable not having a nurse on duty. So <coughs> if there are no subs available, they have to go contract a third party and the um, rates are much higher than that. 
Turkey Hill Middle School received a check from Box Tops for $985.10. They want to thank all the folks who send in the Box Tops, as well as the parents who trim them to the specified size for submission, (laughs) which is really small. You do that in your town? (laughs) It's a lot of work. I used to have fourth graders do it. They loved it. (laughs) At their February 4th meeting in Town Hall, they will vote on a cat. Oops. They're not going to meet February 4th because they don't have a quorum. Right. Um, anyway, so I guess at the next meeting, which is going to be the 25th, because they're skipping the school vacation week, they're going to vote on the calendar for next year. During the capital planning report, Mrs. Soroka informed the committee that the town man- manager had mentioned the possibility of renovating the old primary school and that there's been tentative discussion about school offices being put in there as well as the ACE program. It was discussed that in this instance, set the central office spaces that they're now relocating to Turkey Hill Middle School would not become unusable because they could do something else with it. Um, and they, she also mentioned that a video at the, of the inside of the old primary school has been filmed for the building reuse committee to review and consider, and they haven't been contacted by the reuse committee for further discussion yet. And the third grade annual Empty Bowls event will be held at Turkey Hill this year, May 7th. Thank you. School Building Committee meets next Wednesday. We will actually get a walkthrough of the site in progress. So I'll be able to give a more full report of having walked it. Uh, I'm sure that this last 10 days have, I have not spoken to anybody because it's hard to get people, but I'm sure it's been hampered the yeah, you uh, would think. hampered the progress on the building. So you would think it. But I will be in a fuller report next next week. Actually, not next week. It's the meeting is next Wednesday, so the following week after that. Sewer Commission. Sewer Commission meeting last Tuesday was canceled due to the weather. They're meeting tonight. Okay. Town manager reports. Could I? Um, I wanted to mention the Mass Municipal Association meeting. Go ahead. Okay. It was on January 23rd and 24th. Uh, Governor Baker addressed the meeting on Friday. He assured municipal officials that the path to solving the state's fiscal problems will not run through the cities and towns. He vowed to not cut the flow of state aid as he attempts to cut the estimated $765 million budget de- deficit which he called challenging nothing more. Uh, He promised an ongoing dialogue with local officials while vowing to be very aggressive about protecting local aid. He sees unfunded mandates as just another cut to local aid. Um, He's a former selectman from Swampscott, actually. He signed his first executive order to strengthen ties between the state government and our cities and towns. The order creates a new committee compact cabinet dedicated to municipal issues, chaired by Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, a former Shrewsbury selectman. He assured municipal officials that their door will always be open. His remarks can be reviewed at the Mass Municipal Association website, mma.org. On Saturday morning, U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren discussed issues that are central to the Massachusetts economy, such as infrastructure investment, scientific research, and higher ed. She provided a federal perspective on several topics, such as her efforts to reduce student loan interest rates and to protect the tax-exempt status of municipal bonds. She said this frequent talk in Congress of removing or reducing the municipal bond exemption, which would greatly increase the cost of local road, water, and sewer projects. But she promised, I will lie down in front of that train. Uh, The tax exemption for your municipal bonds, she said, is how we help support your ability to build the infrastructure that the federal government should be helping more with. She said the U.S. is underinvesting in infrastructure and failing to keep up with its global competitive part, part competitors, particularly China. Building infrastructure, strengthening infrastructure, is about good jobs today and better jobs tomorrow. Unfortunately, she added Congress is unable to reach consensus on funding for infrastructure programs and is more inclined to make cuts. She said our infrastructure deficit is like $3.4 trillion, according to the American Society of Engineers. 
and I already mentioned the, the session on collaboration that talked about the Cheers coffee. And there was another session that was really great, hosted by Barry Bluestone. He's of the Dukakis Center at UMass Boston. He had um, a gentleman who um, finds all of the sites for Market Basket and a couple other really um, people, real estate developers and people that really know about economic and development. And they, among other things, they all agreed that having a good website is like the very first thing. That's where these people go first. And if your uh, website is difficult to follow, they just move on. And another really important aspect is an easy um, process for getting all of the permits they need. You know, towns that are friendly and welcoming in that respect. And, and they said that, and, and someone asked, well, how do you know who's friendly? And you said, you know, you're here. You know, it, it gets around. And um, that they also, they just bypass towns. They said taxes isn't really a drawback because it's, it's pretty small considering what they spend. And, you know, their expenses. Utilities are a bigger issue than taxes. And, and they felt having um, strong infrastructure, if everything's in place, that also helps a lot. They said that there was one ma market basket, I forget where it is, but they uh, were able to get in um, off the highway, uh, you know, the access to that mall in like 60 days. It was constructed in 60 days. I thought, man, who did they know? You know, <laughs> but they said that it just makes a huge difference if you've got a good website, um, your permitting process is quick and accessible, and your infrastructure is in place. So that was a great meeting. Excellent. Thank you. Town manager reports. So I too attended the MMA conference. Um, I think Phyllis did a great job summarizing um, the sessions that she went to. I was very pleased with what the governor had to say, um, not not just with this year, but going forward. I, I left after listening to him speak, feeling like we probably won't see a cut in local mm -hmm. aid in fiscal 16. We might not see growth, but we won't see a cut. And that was something that I was concerned with because their projected deficit this year is astronomical compared to what we deal with. And it was encouraging to hear the governor characterize it as as phyllis said as you know it was a challenge but but nothing more than a challenge because it's you know it's 20 years of our budget right that you're <laughs> yeah. talking about so it's just beyond comprehension i think um in terms of our budget this year we've had a lot of snow and have managed to exceed our <laughs> snow and ice budget just just at this point um, I don't because I remember you mentioning something about our snow and ice budget and last time and saying, well up oh. till now we <laughs> haven't had much snow I remember um, so be her fault then I will have some Not assessing blame <laughs> I've been blamed for worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm assessing blame. <laughs> um, I'll have some, some data for you at next week's meeting. I hope to have the second quarter financial statements and then some updated information on the costs for the, the last six days or snow, so relative to snow. Um, we are you know, potentially eligible for some reimbursement through FEMA and MEMA. We're monitoring that, um, have, have been participating in, in the conference calls and doing our due diligence relative to that. So that, that may be a possibility. Um, regarding the fiscal 16 budget, the budget presentation, as was mentioned, will be a week from Thursday. I'm still working on the budget. I have... Um, at this point, working with target budgets, I have about a $600,000 deficit. It's not what I expected, uh, but we had a significant increase in our retirement assessment of about 19%, which is about double what I expected. I'm still drilling down with Worcester Regional Retirement, trying to, to pinpoint the costs. I don't believe there's a mistake. I just need to have the detail. 
Um, but that that's significantly more than what I expected. I did have the opportunity to speak with our health insurance representative at Maya, and he suggested that I include a 7.5% increase for next year, which is about a percent and, and a half higher than what I expected. Um, Maya typically releases its rates, the range of rates at the um, MMA conference. They didn't do that this year. Um, they are trying to incorporate the experience in December of 2014 into the renewal that they're preparing to get rid of some of the bad experience. They felt that in December they had better uh, claims experience than the um, the 24 the last month in their 24 month cycle. So that's why they didn't release those rates. I think we'll do maybe a little bit better than seven and a half, but probably not much better. You may recall we've had two years of essentially zero, so anything is mm -hmm. significant for us. So, um, you know, working with those two things, um, you know, a few meetings ago we had the police chief here talking about training for the police department and some increases, um, increased training requirements and increased cost to the town because some of that training that was provided through the state at no cost that's not available anymore so um, just I, I was sometimes everything breaks one way sometimes it breaks the other I think we've been lucky the last couple of years in terms of you know working with target budgets and being able to meet that and it's a challenge for fiscal 16 to meet that so I just wanted to to mention that um, other than that we've as you know the um, DPW and public safety have been very busy the last six or seven days with the storm they've done a great job the governor's travel ban for the for the blizzard was a godsend mm -hmm. for, um, for them because we had very little activity on the roads it, it allowed DPW to to work pretty much un, um, encumbered by, by having to, to deal with any of the traffic, so that was great. We had relatively few public safety calls during that period of time. This last storm was a little harder because people were out and about, and there's a significant amount of snow on the roads. I'm not sure if you can, I, I heard trucks outside the building a short time ago. We are removing some snow. Um, we're at the point where we have to for safety reasons, so that is occurring this evening. And um, I think we're going to get some more snow in the next couple of days. <laughs> so um, that's it on reports. Well, that goes right into you have the next section, too, in appointments. I do. Um, I'll, I'll take the second up first. The second is a request for you to ratify the appointment. Um, under Section 4-2C of the Town Charter, the appointment is of Elaine M. Peterson to the position of Executive Assistant. Um, she is filling the a position uh, vacated by a retirement at the end of last calendar year. Um, Mrs. Peterson currently works for the Town of Hubbardston. She is, uh, has the title of Executive Secretary to the Board of Selectmen, and she's also a Municipal Finance Clerk for the Town of T Hubbardston. She's worked there for the last nine years or so. Uh, her position is very similar. The duties of her current position are very similar to uh, the duties of, of the position here. She processes for the Town of Hubbardston all of the um, licenses and permits. She's very familiar with the ABCC regulations, um, committee agendas and minutes, insurance. She's very familiar. I was thrilled. Um, I had really great people to interview. I, I think I interviewed seven people, and if I had seven positions, I probably would have hired all seven people. They were just really that good. We had a lot of people with uh, municipal experience, a lot of land use experience, um, people with private sector experience that would have been very beneficial, and I really wish I could have hired a few more people because we <laughs> had great people. But um, Elaine Peterson is who I've chosen for uh, this position. I think she's going to be a terrific asset to the town, hopefully starting on February 17th. 
any questions, comments, motions? I would make a motion to ratify the appointment of Elaine M. Peterson to the position of Executive Assist Assistant, effective February 17th, you said? Mm -hmm. Yes, February 17th. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. And the second is um, a request or a recommendation to you that you appoint Mylene Malari to the position of treasurer collector. Um, the appointment of the treasurer collector is a little bit different than some of the other appointments. It falls um, under a section of the charter where the town manager recommends to the board of selectmen the appointment of a treasurer collector rather than a ratification, which we did under the last item. Mylene currently serves as the assistant treasurer for the town. She's been in that position for the last nine years. She's a very dedicated and energetic employee. Um, you will recall that we recently went through the process of um, hiring a treasurer collector and weren't able to find a suitable candidate. Mylene was not an applicant for the position at that time. Um, it, during the time that I've been with the town, I think this will be the third treasurer collector we've recruited for. Uh, the other two times I asked her if she would apply and she did not and so I didn't ask her this time. Um, but after th things fell through with the process, a number of her co-workers suggested to her that she um, consider the position and so she approached me about that. I met with Karen Brochu, our town accountant, and we talked about it and felt that Mylene would be a good candidate uh, but because because of some of the the duties of the treasurer collector are just done by that person. Um, so there were some things in that job that Mylene has not had a chance to demonstrate that she knew. So we identified some of those and gave her a timetable and she completed all of the work on time and it was completely accurate. I was very impressed with the work that she had done and so at this point I'd like to recommend that you rescind my appointment as the temporary treasurer collector and appoint Mylene Malari um, to the position. Before we comment I just want to say that uh, I'm glad to see uh, it's always nice when you see somebody being hired from within and somebody who served well with the town and and I understand from talking to people why Ms. Millard did not, you know, put her name in on the other rounds. But I'm so glad that she has now been talked into doing it because she certainly has the qualifications and maybe just didn't have the confidence back at that point. And I'm very glad that she went through this process this time and is being offered the position. I think she will do well as treasurer and, and do as well as treasurer as she has as assistant treasurer. So I, I appreciate her um, finally, maybe with some coaxing <laughs> coming forward. And um, she has trained the last two treasurer tax collectors, right? I would say in um, many to several aspects of the job she has. <laughs> Excellent. So I would entertain, if nobody has any other further comments, I'd entertain a motion, which includes the rescinding of the appointment of the temporary treasurer collector. I would like to, I'm very, very happy um, that Mylene has come forward, and I would like to make a motion to rescind the appointment of Carrie Spidell as a temporary treasurer collector, and to appoint Mylene Malari as the treasurer collector. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Excellent. Uh, we do have an executive session. Before I read that, I will ask if anybody on the board has any final public comment. Any public comment from the public? Okay, so uh, we do have uh, request to go into executive session under Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, Sub A2, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation 
for negotiations with non-union personnel and to conduct collective bargaining session or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. These contract negotiations will be for the town accountant and the chair so declares it. We will not be returning to open session. So I would entertain a motion that we go into executive session. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Good night, everyone, and hopefully, weather permitting, we'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>